Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Love Justice Podcast. My name is Tiara M. Tucker, and I am so excited to once again host this amazing podcast where we are truly taking the social justice movement to another level. So this is the opportunity to hear from social justice activists, advocates, and some of the nonprofit organizations that are really making a difference in the social justice space. So if you have been following along over the past few weeks and episodes, we have had some pretty amazing guest speakers. So we kicked off the Love Justice podcast by hearing from the News Literacy Project. The News Literacy Project is a nonpartisan education nonprofit that is building a national movement to advance the practice of news literacy throughout American society, creating better informed, more engaged, and more empowered individuals, and ultimately a stronger democracy. We really had a great time with Mike, and we spoke to another amazing organization and representative, Unity Unlimited. Unity Unlimited is a nonprofit organization whose main mission is providing educational activities and resources to people, young and old, to foster unity and harmony within the community, the city, the state, the nation, and the world, regardless of race, culture, or denomination. So to check out all the great things that are going on with Love Justice, visit our website, lovejustice.com. That is where you can go to learn about all of these organizations, as well as so many other organizations that are really making an impact in the social justice space. You can go there to read news articles, receive all types of resources, and ultimately, you can become a member of the Love Justice family. And also, you can volunteer and meet with others throughout the country who are just like you, wanting to make a difference. So for today's episode of the Love Justice Podcast, I am so honored to welcome Fair Vote. They're a nonpartisan organization seeking better elections for all. They research and advance voting reforms that make democracy more functional and representative for every American. So help us welcome to the Love Justice Podcast, no one other than Miss Rachel Hutchinson. Hi, thank you for having me. Hello, how are you doing today? Great, how about you? I am doing wonderful. It's a pleasure to have you on representing Fair Vote, which is an organization that I have a lot of respect for. So, Rachel, tell everybody a little bit more about Fair Vote. Sure. Uh, Fair Vote was founded in 1992. We're celebrating 30 years this year. Um, And our goal has stayed the same, even though our country has changed significantly, uh, which is that we want better elections for all Americans. That means better choices for voters uh, and representatives who reflect what the people want. Our current focus is on doing that through research and advocacy around two main topics. One is a reform called Ranked Choice Voting. um, And the second, a congressional bill called the Fair Representation Act. Um, to give you the longer winded history, uh, Fair Vote actually formed it as the Center for Proportional Representation. Um, as you might be aware of, the way we elect our representatives is not super representative or proportional. Uh, we use a system called single member plurality voting, which means if a candidate wins with, say, 60 percent of votes, uh, the 40 percent of people who did not vote for that candidate essentially have no representation. So Fair Vote formed to promote more proportional forms of representation. Uh, however, this single member plurality voting revealed another problem, which is that if a third candidate enters the race, you don't even need 50% to win anymore. Take the 1992 presidential election, for example. Uh, Ross Perot entered the race and won nearly 20% of votes. Uh, As a result, Bill Clinton actually won with about 43%, meaning most people actually voted for someone other than the person who won. Um, And because of instances like this, third party, independent, uh, diverse startup candidates are discouraged from running. Uh, So at that point, Fair Vote started advocating for ranked choice voting. 
Ranked choice voting is a reform that aims to give voters more choice and more voice. So instead of just voting for one candidate in an election, you would get to rank your candidates in order of preference. Your first choice, second choice, third choice, so on. Um, and if my first choice doesn't have a shot, my vote goes to my next choice and so on. And these rankings uh, are used to make sure that a candidate emerges with 50% of votes. Uh, so this reform has really picked up steam. Um, it was adopted in San Francisco in 2002 and then had a bunch of local wins throughout the decade, including in Oakland in Minneapolis. Uh, we had our first big statewide win in Maine in 2016. Um, and then a bunch of other jurisdictions have adopted it since. Uh, New York City, uh, Utah has a pilot program. Alaska has now adopted it for their statewide elections. Um, it's been used in five different Democratic presidential primaries, um, some congressional primaries in Virginia. Um, and 2022 is our biggest year ever. So there's a record of 10 ballot measures in November, which means uh, the people in certain jurisdictions are going to get to decide if they want to adopt ranked choice voting. Uh, this is happening statewide in Nevada, as well as some more local jurisdictions like Evanston, Illinois, uh, Seattle, and Portland, Oregon. So yeah, a lot going on at Fair Vote at the moment. Definitely a lot of great work. I, I love hearing how you all recognize an issue, a problem, and you all created a solution. Absolutely. Yes. So Rachel, Tell us a little bit more about you. I want to know more about your role and, and what made you want to be a part of, of this organization. Sure. Um, I'm a research analyst. I conduct research and data analysis uh, in support of Fair Votes advocacy mission that involves investigating and showing evidence of the problems that necessitate electoral reform and researching the impact of ranked choice voting and other reforms in practice. So I became involved because I started my career out campaigning for individual congressional candidates. Um, I was a young person and I wanted to make a difference in politics and believed I could do so by helping good candidates get elected. Uh, but after learning about bit more, you realize it doesn't sort of matter if we have well-intentioned people going into a system that has a poor incentive structure. Um, as long as representatives don't have to be accountable to the majority of their constituents, as long as people aren't getting elected in proportion to their level of support, um, and as long as people don't feel like they have a real choice and real say, we aren't going to have government work for us. And that realization is sort of what brought me to this field. Nice. And, and what I'm hearing is that you literally started out, you were, you were young, you just wanted to be involved. So speak on that a little bit. The people that are wanting to get involved don't know where to start when it comes to, you know, supporting nonprofit organizations or stepping into helping out with, with politics. What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, we have a ton of great resources on our website. If you want to learn more about electoral reform specifically, uh, you could visit fairvoteaction.org, uh, follow us at FairVote on Twitter and at FairVote Reform on Facebook. And of course, just sort of pay attention to these local ballot measures that are going on. Maybe there's an opportunity um, in your jurisdiction to vote to implement ranked choice voting or another reform. Um, and of course, keep voting um, uh, as you normally do. And if you feel frustrated that you feel like your vote's not mattering, we understand. So sort of go to our website, learn more and see um, how you can help. Yes, very nice. It's, it's such an important time in all of our lives to really get involved and, and be very informed. So that's why I really love what you all are doing. What impact do you feel you all are really making in this social justice space? Yeah, I would say we're making an impact in the social justice space by working to institute better and fairer elections for all Americans. Um, and making sure voters really feel like they have a real choice and say in who represents them. And we think that's a really worthy goal. Uh, ranked choice voting, for example, elects representative winners who have broad support rather than those who achieve more of a narrow win by appealing to a small base. Um, it incentivizes candidates to reach out to new groups of voters. It allows us to express how we honestly feel about multiple candidates instead of just one. Um, and it encourages new and diverse candidates to run and has led to increased representation of women and candidates of color. What would you say that you are most proud of for what your organization is doing? What, what makes you so proud? Yeah, so at a point in our um, organization's history, ranked choice voting seemed like a great sort of theoretical idea because it hadn't been implemented in the U.S. before. Um, but now that we've actually seen it play out in real U.S. elections, we have a lot to be proud of. Uh, for example, it's helped elect the first majority female city council in New York City. Um, it helped elect the first majority people of color city councils in Minneapolis and Salt Lake City. Um, another thing we're really proud of is everywhere it's used, voters like it and they understand it. Um, in Alaska, 
exactly when they used it for the first time, just in August, 85% of them found it simple. Um, and 73% ranked more than one candidate, which really shows people are buying into the system and they're enjoying the opportunity to express their preferences. Um, New York City, when they used it last year, 95% uh, of them found it simple and over 75% want to use it again. So uh, we're just really happy that it's having real life success in actual US elections. So to the listeners out there who maybe are overwhelmed as they think about this upcoming election or as they think about voting and, and all of those things, any words of encouragement that you can offer people? Yeah, of course, just keep voting. Um, that is always the utmost importance, but uh, definitely be watching out for what's going on in your jurisdiction. And if you're frustrated that you feel like you're not having the choices you want on the ballot, um, or you're not really able to express your preferences, there is a solution and we do have people working on it. So just sort of, you know, be following the movement and supportive where you can, especially if you're in a jurisdiction that's looking to implement it. Yes. Anything exciting coming up? Yeah, uh, ranked choice voting is the fastest growing nonpartisan reform in the nation. Uh, we're reaching 56 jurisdictions with 14 million people who are currently using it. That's up from just about 10 cities in 2016, and we're really hoping to keep that momentum going. Um, as I mentioned, we have a record number of ballot measures in November. Uh, this November, people actually using it live in Alaska, Maine, several California cities, including Oakland and San Francisco. Um, but we also have some longer term goals that include federal legislation legislation, specifically a bill called the Fair Representation Act. The Fair Representation Act is a candidate-based, almost Americanized form of proportional representation. Um, its main components are proportional ranked choice voting, multi-member districts, and fair requirements for congressional redistricting, um, all of which would mean that representatives are elected in proportion to their level of support, and voter groups, whether they be ideological, racial, cultural, are represented in proportion to their presence in the population. Uh, so that legislation has been introduced, um, and we're, we're working on getting getting more support for it. Uh, Portland, Maine is voting in November on whether they'd like to adopt proportional ranked choice voting, so kind of a smaller scale version. Uh, so we're definitely seeing a grow in demand for this type of reform. So we have a lot to be excited about. Yes, definitely. And congratulations. I love to hear the passion and the excitement from individuals that are working in the nonprofit space. So thank you for all that you're doing. So we have the website for people that want to go check it out and learn more. So Rachel, What's your favorite part of the website? What do you want to make sure people go to when they go to that website? Yeah, I really like the page on the website. Uh, we have a page of data on ranked choice voting. Um, a lot of people hear about the system and they think, wow, this sounds great, but what does it actually look like in real life? Um, and that page, it tells you all about it. It tells you how people feel about it. Um, it tells you how often people rank their ballots, uh, what kind of winners we're getting. So I'd say if you're curious to learn more and really understand how it works in real life, that would be the cool page on the website to visit. Very nice. So everybody go check it out fairvote.org. Check out that site. And where can they go to follow you on social media? Yes. Yeah, so on social media, you can follow us at fairvote on Twitter um, and at fairvote reform on Facebook. Very nice. And anything else that you want to share, Rachel? Yeah, just thank you for having me and giving me the opportunity to spread the word about fair vote and ranked choice voting. Uh, we hope anyone listening will join us in this movement to give voters more choice and more voice. I love it. It's all about the choice and it's all about the voice. So thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you again to your entire organization and everybody that's supporting your organization because you all are definitely making a difference in the social justice movement. And I wish you all nothing but the best. We're going to be following you all and supporting you. So thank you for all that you're doing. Let's stay in touch. Thank you. There you have it. Another amazing and informative edition of the Love Justice Podcast. So we appreciate you all for tuning in. Make sure you check out the other episodes where we had some amazing speakers. Um, again, I'm excited to say that we had Miss Opal Lee as a guest on the previous podcast. Miss Opal Lee just celebrated a birthday. So happy birthday again, Miss Opal Lee, one of the hardest working women in the world, I would say. Also, just was nominated for the Nobel Prize. So we are so proud of Ms. Opal Lee here at Love Justice. And we are also so proud of all of the other organizations and individuals that are out there in the communities making a difference. So 
continue to follow us, continue to listen to the podcast, and also make sure you visit lovejustice.com to get even more resources about the social justice movement and to find ways where you can be informed and involved. Have a wonderful day.